Welcome everyone back to the Pommy and Oz channel. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Can't thank you enough for the support. You can go a step further as well, become a member of the channel. We have the wonderful Explicit Empress on the show for the members, giving us some mindset and some real good spiritual and physical advice um, for the way to empower not just our football experience, but also our lives. So thank you very much to her. We've got the Hot 20 draftees. That's exclusive. You will get the for the regular people every so often, but that's a real good way to keep up to date with how the draft and how the uh, academies and uh, the state league football scene is going. But today we've got what has been a long time in the making. Um, we've got the Premiership DNA. So this is really, really intriguing. What we've done is we've gone through the history, the last 10 years of the AFL, um, to try and see if there's any patterns into trying to predict who wins it and who are the hot sides at the moment. It's been some interesting results. And uh, let's, without any further ado, get into it. So please ask your questions in the comments and things like that. A lot of work's gone into this, so it's always exciting. So here we go. So first off, what we've got to do is we've done this up till the start of this round. So the games that have been played at the moment have totally been disregarded. This was basically last round, um, so the stats are right. They may have changed a little bit from then, but well, they've changed astronomically. But let's look at the average ladder position of the opposition, because this is a really good one um, to look at, because... It warps stats. It, it warps stats. It's something that you can neutralise it, but genuinely it is. And when people talk about fixture difficulty, it's one of the things that really annoys me because people go on ladder ladder position last year. Genuinely, there's massive changes. That If you look at average changes, there is some real big jumps and slides. So I always find a good way to look at the ladder position is you disregard the first two rounds and then go thereafter. Um, and why why you do that is because obviously the first round is alphabetical. This year we had a Mickey Mouse round, which then made half the sides not play. So if you start from round two, everyone's got a game and it's kind of fair enough. I mean, obviously, if you're doing it alphabetically, whoever plays Adelaide is what? Do you know what I mean? So th there we are. So you can see here, Cowton on average, 5.8 ladder position. So that basically means they're playing an average of sixth. Richmond, average of ninth. GWS, average of ninth. So they're playing decent sides, right? And then you can see how it flips. So you can see that genuinely, I hate to give the AFL credit if I, if, if I do it, but genuinely, you find this happens a lot. Genuinely, as you would expect, 18 teams, the average of, if, if you do that and you look for the median of 18, 1 to 18, that's 9, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, because 9 times 2 is 18. So, it's usually around the 8th to 10th spot, you find, if you do this at the end of the season. You can see here, Carlton obviously have had a harder thing. Now, I'm not saying Carlton have been hard done by. I'm not that type of fan. And I hope the opposition fans in the chat know that even though I am, like, literally Cowton's number one fan, I'm not blue-eyed too much. So it's good to note, though, that Cowton have had a tough, tough running. So the important stat here that we're looking at here, and this is a, st a staggering 78% of sides have over half of their best 22 playing 100% of game time come grand final time. So at the moment... Sydney have 58.3% of their side playing all the games available. Fremantle, 39.4. GWS, 36.7. And then you can see here, Richmond being horrifically brutalised by injuries and Richmond and, Gold, and, and West Coast and Gold Coast. They've had their own fair injury problems, but also rotation. And it's really interesting here because by now, for this stat to work, pretty much if you're struggling, almost 60% of your team has to play from now till the grand final, which usually what that's saying is by this stage of the season, teams are pretty much landlocked and their identity is pretty much sorted. It's interesting Sydney have had zero injuries apart from Callum Mills and players have got really well. So this shows why they're heads on favourites because there's a little bit of synergy growing. And um, the word I can't say, continuity is, is building. And this is a really interesting one, particularly for the Blue Boys, 
the Blue Boys obviously had some injuries. It's quite worth noting, though, that if you look at this stat, Carlton currently rank eighth in this stat. But only two players missing haven't statistically been better than the players that have been replaced by, which is a real important thing. So that's something to notice there, that Carlton maybe have been benefited from this. And we do see that historically through the years as well. And then we go into the forward half start. This one here, obviously, is self-explanatory. Timing forward half means the opposition can't kick goals. And you can see, surprisingly, Port do spend a lot of time. It's very interesting when you look at Port and how they make up that they do get slingshotted out the back quite a bit. Geelong, though, no surprise. They have a very big onus on forward pressure. And Brisbane may surprise you here. You can see here Adelaide, Eagles and North do struggle with this stat. But this is a really important stat. Why is this an important stat? Now, you find from about fourth to sixth, not much changes. It's, it, you're talking like maybe five possessions in the forward line. But obviously, if you can lock it in the forward half and you can dominate there, that helps. There is teams, though, that do... This is one of them stats that is kind of what we call an anomaly stat. So because what this can mean is you piss about with the ball. So you know when we talk about inside 50s, inside 50s since about 2019 have been really, 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 really shot down the importance. It used to be a stat, and you hear it quite a lot, oh, we won the inside 50 count. It's a very old school methodology. As we're not a kick mark league anymore... It's forward pressure, it's pressure acts, it's being able to create repeat entries. Inside 50s don't really hold that kudos because it's your ability to convert from their first time and finding different ways. Gone are the days that we see players like Fev go one out and we kick to them. Now it's very congested, it's a congestion type league. But very important stats to kind of look at. This is probably one of the least of the important ones that we found, but... It is an important stat all the same, your ability to convert. And you can see there, two of the bottom two in real life are featured quite heavily in this. Turnover differential. This is probably the, the God thumbprint stat. If we look over the last four years, these have been really important. And you can see here, turnover differential, Sydney and Carlton leading the way. A staggering plus 22.9 for Sydney, plus 11.2 for Carlton, plus 9.9 .9 for Geelong. And then you can see the teams that are struggling. It's interesting. Richmond used to be one of the best at this side, and that has changed. What this means is your ability to turn opposition ball into goals is so important. Your ability to be vulnerable and be attacking shouldn't be understated. And this is why this stat is really important. And you can see there are three of the standout sides this year featuring that stat heavily. It's a very good tipping stat to that as well. If you tip on the team with the best turnover differential, I believe it's 83% of the time you will be right. So that there's one thing. There is some anomalies, but there is some of the stats I could give you that change it, but very interesting little stat. Rebound 50 rate, your ability to rebound when inside 50s are. And this is probably more important than your inside 50s. And you can see three best sides, Sydney, Fremantle and Adelaide. Interesting here because... This is where you see with stats, you've got to look at a lot of stats. One stat will never tell you the answer. That's why we're doing this is called the Premiership DNA, because you can always fabricate a stat. So if you just use this stat in your argument, Adelaide are the third best side in the league, you've got to then look at other things. So the time in the forward half, we saw Adelaide feature in the bottom section, things like that. You've got to look at that. North Eagles and Hawks finishing bottom of this stat. But this is a really important stat. And then from this stat, what you're looking for is scores in defensive half. You're looking at scores from turnover. You're trying to get a picture here. But what this is a real good indicator of is its ability to withstand pressure. And it's a really good little gambit because it tells you how many inside 50s the opposition have had. But if you see a side there that doesn't have a lot of inside 50s against, that has good midfield pressure feature in this, like Sydney, there's a warning sign there for how good they are in the terms of that they can withstand pressure. So it's a very interesting little stat here, and it shows how good Sydney's makeup is of its back line. Point four, there's a reason that percentage is used to differentiate teams, and you find points against and percentage is less important, but the ability to score figures and the fact that Sydney have averaged over 100 points this year is insane. Carlton second and Geelong third. These are really important stats. And we find percentage becomes more important in the run-up 
to when we get to the end of the season. Eagles, North and Richmond obviously featuring at the bottom of this. But what is this stat really does tell you is the ability to put on scores. We always hear about kicking over 100 is important. It is to an extent. But what you do find here is the ability to organically score through different methodologies is so, so incredibly important. There is some caveats to this rule. If it's lopsided the points from certain areas, like stoppage from last year from Carlton, you do find it's a warped start. When you've got good free balance sides here, and both free sides here feature very high in stoppage, turnover, forward half, and defensive half scores, that gives you a warning. That gives you a warning. So very good little stat there to look at. Up next, points forward half differential. So you're looking at the forward arcs for and against. You can see here Pies, Sydney and Lions feature heavily. Partly system. Pies, particularly their system, they like to enact pressure from the off. So the Lions. Varying results when you do that. And you can see Carlton have shifted from that from about round five to a different methodology. Sydney, though, very strong. They play a very heavy forward press, and they have a lot of running in that side as well. So it's why they really focus on this. They have come up against sides that do hemorrhage scores from defensive half, which is very interesting to note. But, again, Sydney features top of the list, showing that they are probably the most balanced side in the league. Up next, we've got defensive half scores. And no surprise, Saints are in there. Knicks and Ross, two sides that have big onus on slingshot back halves of the ground. But Sydney, interesting feature again. And this is why they are probably odds-on favourites to win this title. Something going against Sydney, though, even though we're giving them the praise, is teams genuinely don't start as well as they do and then end very well. There is usually a seesaw effect. There is some anomalies to the rule. But generally what we're looking at is from the bye, your form kind of leads up to where you are. And what you're looking for there is... You've got to look at where it is. It's genuinely about round 16 we're looking for, and there is a stat that backs that up in a minute. But as you can see here, defensive half scores, Sydney, incredible, incredible. So, and the Saints here, and that's showing you about being balanced, right? Defensive half scores, good for the Saints. When we look at the other end, not so good. So very important to have a balance, but a very good area here that the warning signs here are here for teams. Carlton feature in the top six for the rebound 50 rate. And that they're astronomically increasing their defensive half. So it's a really interesting little thing that the teams are starting to settle. Now, this is a really important stat. 90% of the sides have gone 4 and 0 that have won the flag. So that's a real high thing. That's a real big, big thing. The last four, you can win it. And you can see the average ladder position of the sides that they play in the last four rounds. You can see Carlton play the 12th side on average. Dogs play the 13th. And so Geelong. So odds are, when you look at the statistics as well, that you are going to win them games. You are going to win them games. Then you look at teams that are playing harder opposition. Pies, Frio and Essendon have the hardest last four run home based on the round as it is. Very interesting little stat there because the ladder position does change quite a bit, but you're looking about two places on average from now till the end of the year. So that's a really interesting little stat there that the run home for form usually gives you a good indicator there. Doggies are a real good case in point here because they steamrolled home. And what does that mean across the metrics? So Sydney are obviously the favourites, averaging a position of 3.5 across the DNA metrics that we found. Carlton and Geelong. Now, Carlton's slightly ahead of them because they've had the harder run so far, which is a very interesting fact. We did try and negate it, and it's really hard to do, but... Because you're obviously comparing apples with oranges, which are two different things. But Carlton's number would be about 5.1 if you'd switched it with more of a playing the average of 10th, which is what you try and look for, the average of 9.5. So very interesting. Richmond, North and Eagles predicted to finish in that position. Eagles being the worst side and thing. So a very interesting one. So if you've got any questions, let me know. It's a real interesting thing. And if you wanted to go a bit more detail in this, we can do. I thought I'd give you a, a nice little video to bit your teeth into. But statistically at the moment, Sydney, Carlton and Geelong are the threats. There is some wonderful teams, though, that are all in there. If you are interested in that order, the teams we're looking for here are Sydney, Geelong, GWS, Collingwood, Brisbane, Dogs, Suns, and Port Adelaide. 
are teams that are threats, particularly in the key metrics as well. But there is definitely four or five teams that can win this statistically there and then teams that are making up the numbers. And it's going to be very interesting this back half of the season. So I want you to keep an eye out on their metrics and maybe we will do, if you want, if that's something that interests you, we can do like a weekly little rundown on this so we can actually have a look at it. So let me know in the comments. Peace, love and light. I'm out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad